Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Uh, I am here with Elizabeth Hargrave, the designer of Wingspan, uh, and we are going to teach you how to play the game. So there's some other how to plays out there on the market. There's some really, really good heavy gamer how to plays. There are, uh, even our not goal, so heavy. Even not so heavy. <laughs> there's, there's a whole mix. Like we're entering yeah. a crowded field. This game has gotten a lot of attention. Uh, so, you, I mean, you got a, you got some big shoes to feel. <laughs> no point. pressure. No pressure. My own game. Okay. Your own game. Uh, our sort of aim is to address something that you said you hadn't seen a lot of reviewers do because it's a newer feature in the new printing, uh, and that's going to be the swift start. Right. Right. Um, it's something that um, we realized, especially as Wingspan started getting picked up outside of the gaming world and hmm. more with birders who haven't played as many board games before, that, it, um, that they could use another little push getting them started. So I think this will be helpful to gamers and non-gamers yes. alike, but I want to make sure that people understand sort of how to jump in um, with that first play with the Swift Start. Yeah, so our, our main goal for this video, if you're, if you're a gamer, welcome. We're glad to have you here. But if you're new to this hobby, if you got this from Christmas, uh, you know, some family members gave it to you and you're, you're diving in and going, what have I signed up for? Uh, or what have my family members signed up for? Uh, we're also super glad you're here and we want to give you a video that can get you onto the table, out of the box, uh, without having to go through these as heavily. Right. At some point, you'll probably still need to reference them. There's some rules and mechanics and things that we just can't cover in a, in a tighter video. But we want to get you to the table for the first game or two kind of yep. off this video and off of this uh, off of this quick yep. start guide. Yep. So, uh, take it away. Great. So, <laughs> on the top, when you open your box, you are going to have three separate rule books. Mm. Um, the, the, this one is the main rule book, um, which will have all of the rules. And then there's an appendix that you really only need if you have a question about a particular card and how it works. You can sure. look up bird by bird what the cards do. Because each bird card will have unique yes. mechanics. Yes. Uh, and each bird card also specifies what they do but this is a little bit of a deeper right. reference. But as Jesse said, like watch this video, don't worry too much about them. Anything with the automa on it, you mm. can ignore completely unless you want to play solo, which is also an option in this game. So that's the automa rule book and these cards with this gear symbol on them. Yeah. You can just totally set those aside if you're gonna be playing in a group. Now, before we dive into this quick start, let's cover just the stuff we have laid out here yeah. on the table. Um, this is the stuff that people will have gotten out of the box uh, while they try to get set up, right? Right. Okay. So you have five different colors of eggs. The colors do not matter. You can mix them all together. Um, and the way you're going to pack it back into the box, there's actually a little diagram on the inside yes. of the box, how to get everything back in. You're going to want them to be in two of these containers. And then the, the, these food tokens come in um, big sheets of cardboard. you got to punch them out and you can mm -hmm. mix them all together. And those use the other two of these containers. So there's like eight pieces of plastic that are these square little containers. So each one is a bottom and a lid mm -hmm. work together. Uh, and then you're gonna also punch out a bunch of these little square um, tokens that go on this mat. So this is um, four different goals that you're gonna have as you play f the game over four different rounds. You're gonna stop and score each one of these mm -hmm. and we'll talk more about that. Yeah, we'll dive into that. Yep. Just know that these fit in right here right. and they deal with victory points so your end scoring yep so don't worry about it quite at the moment and then there's a bird feeder you get to put together mm -hmm. it's fun. <laughs> so that's a little arts and crafts project you also have some beautiful dice with five beautiful dice and you roll them through the bird feeder and that is just to you know yeah. a way to roll the dice and not have them go everywhere and knocking things over on your table but also you'll be keeping track of which dice are in this tray and which ones have been taken out and that's actually an important thing and then I think the, the last few things we have here, we have yep. our stack of bird cards. Uh, we have a few face up. That's yep. going to be a marketplace where you can draw bird cards. We'll touch on that in just a bit. Yep. We have our first player token. Yep. End game scoring cards or sort of challenge right. cards. Right. Uh, again, similar to this, these are just hidden. Uh, these are your personal ones and these are ones that everyone is competing for. And then we have our main player board here in the center. Yes. This will be every person that's playing the game will have one of these in front of them. Yep. And this will be where you're taking a lot of the actions throughout the course of the game. Right. Uh, so now that you're familiar with general terms of what everything is, yep. let's swing into the swift start. So there is in your box a Ziploc baggie that has um, four players worth of swift start guides in them. So. 
This, these are gonna give you your starting hand for the game and directions on how to take your first four turns or so in the game. So you're gonna look at the top of the player um, Ooh, this one this one starts with ducks. We're gonna yeah. have to uh, Jesse is a duck fan. Well you're on you're Quackalope. on Quackalope. So this one says you start with the canvas back. Okay. And Vos Swift. And three food tokens. So you get an invertebrate. Okay. And a seed. And a fruit. Alright. That is your starting hand. The way the rules say to start is to get five bird cards and five pieces of each different kind of food. So there's five total. There's also um, fish and rodents or small mm -hmm. mammals. Um, so this, and, and then to choose among them. And this is basically simplifying that and just saying, no, nope, just start with these two cards and these three foods. The, and the reason for this is if you're going through the, the rule book, uh, mm -hmm. that first stage of the game really builds out your strategy for the rest of the game. Yeah. So once you know this, that's a really fun and interesting like start to the round. But yeah. this being your first time. It's a hard uh, decision to make if you've never played before. This sets it up for you immediately. Yep. Yep. You'll have so, something that can work. Right, so these um, four setups are sort of guaranteed to get you off yep. and running. Um, so, you know, and the player numbers don't actually matter then just to sure. keep track it, that there are four different ones here. Um, so you do the same with player three, so you look and find the, the white-threaded swift mm -hmm. um, and the scaled quail and the brant. Um, and, and so this player would start with three cards and then two pieces of food. An invertebrate and a seed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, after we have our sort of starting hand and our starting resources drafted, mm -hmm. what's the next step that this is going to run us right. through? So the two cards that you're starting with, are, you're going to be holding them in your hand most of the game. Okay. You could also, if you're not comfortable holding them in your hand, if you want to play it open, you can just set them out in front of you sure. but not on your board yet but it's a significant action when you're playing them out onto your board. Um, and this, this large um, instruction sheet that goes for each player is gonna walk you through your first four turns. And okay. that's gonna walk you through some of the main actions of the game. But the basic structure of the game is that you've got four different actions that you're gonna choose from. You're gonna do one of those actions on each turn. So either play you're a bird. You're gonna either play a bird, you're gonna gain a food, lay eggs or draw bird cards. So okay. those are the four things that you, just fundamentally, those are your four choices every time you take a turn. Okay. Um, the structure of the game is that you're gonna play over four rounds, which I mentioned, mentioned earlier, and you're gonna use these action cubes to keep track of how many turns you've taken mm. each round. In the first round, you start with eight action cubes, so you're gonna take eight turns. So let me work and through this. And we're gonna do four of these. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and work through this. Right. You can kind of demonstrate and supplement. Yep. Uh, so turn one, play the canvas back in your wetland. So step A is going to be place an action cube in the play a bird row above the first column where the card goes. So take one of your action cubes. Okay. And you're gonna place it above where the bird goes. So in this first column, these rectangles are where you're gonna play bird cards. Okay. Uh, B. Play your canvas back in the first space in your wetland. Discard your seed token and your fruit token to pay for it. So, so the, so the cost of each bird is, is um, these symbols here. So the first symbol is what habitat it has to be played into. So this bird absolutely has to go in the wetland row. Sometimes or for instance, the swift here will show it that it to go has to go in, in the, the woodland. And right. if there's multiple icons, those are multiple locations that's a, that's that they can That's a choice go into. that you can make. Okay. And then the second information here is what food this bird eats. Okay. So that's obviously a seed. And then the second one is, this is actually the symbol for a wild food. So it could be anything. So it could be anything. You happen to start with that fruit, and so you're gonna discard the seed and the fruit. To and it looks like we're holding on to uh, the invertebrate, the, the green worm here, yep. because the swift actually requires that. That could be true, yes. So that would be a good choice. Okay, so I'll set those back <laughs> into, the, uh, into the main pool. Yep. And then once you have paid for this bird with its food and put it in the right habitat, it is gonna be on your mat for the rest of the game in that spot. You okay. never have to pay for it again or anything like that. And it states that the bird's power is not activated now. You'll do it when you use the wetland. Right. What does that mean? 
So that is a fundamental thing for the, how the structure of this game works. When you use any of these three spots, so not playing a bird, but when you gain food, when you lay eggs, or when you draw bird cards, on a future turn, you're gonna activate the first open spot here, and then you're gonna go through all of your birds that you've played into that row, and do, if they have this brown power on it, see it says draw bird cards, then activate any brown mm -hmm. powers in this row. And it specifically says on the card itself, when activated, uh, yep. all players draw one card from the deck. Right. So every brown card will not only activate when you do that row, but also tell you exactly what it does. Yes. Okay. There's a few other symbols on here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go ahead and just touch on what those are Absolutely. so people are familiar with these cards. Yep. So the feather, the number next to the feather is how many points this bird is worth at the end of the game. End game scoring, that's Straight it? Straight up, so now okay. you have four points. Okay. You're ahead. Uh, great, <laughs> I'm winning. Um, the round symbol is the type of nest that this bird has. Sure. And this bird has a star there. A star is wild for nests. Oh, okay. So the reason that nests might matter is um, on things like the end of round goals or the bonus cards, or sometimes even on other birds, you may see things that are looking for a specific nest type. So for example, um, this end of round goal is looking for the number of eggs that people have on birds with that specific bowl nest mm -hmm. symbol. So this bird would count towards that because it's wild. Okay. Um, this bird wouldn't because it lives in a cavity nest. Okay. So this would not count towards this goal. Um, and then the egg symbols on there are uh, the upper limit of how many eggs you can have on this bird. So we I can keep a maximum of yep. four yep. Uh, whenever I do a lay an egg action. Right. Okay. Which we haven't gotten to yet. Sure. Uh, moving down this, move your action cube to the left part of your player map where it says play a bird. This marks that your turn is over. Yep. So. I played You're here. always going to be moving your cubes from the right to the left. I paid the food cost, I mm -hmm. played the bird down, and now this is just shifting to the side? Yep. Okay. Uh, while your turns are simple, moving the action cube may seem unnecessary. They can be very helpful later in the game, so it's good to get used to doing that now. Yep. Good to know. <laughs> turn two, so we'd let everyone else around the table go. Correct. And then we'd come back to our turn again. Yep. Uh, on turn two, it says place your action cube in the space to the right of your canvas back and then do the action shown in that space. Draw a card if there is a bird that eats in vertebrates, that might be a good pick. So that would mean I'm playing here? Yes. Okay. And let's talk about drawing bird cards. Sure. So um, this symbol on your mat just means that you get to draw one card. Mm -hmm. um, when you draw, you can draw any of the three face-up cards from the tray, or you can just draw blind from the deck. Okay. Um, so, you know, this is recommending, since you have a bug, you might look for a bird that eats a bug. These eat bugs plus something else. Sure. Um, but you can, you know that you also have this bird in your hand still that uses it. So I it's do. not super, um, concerning. So, you're so gonna one draw, thing they might yep. want to look at would be mm -hmm. just some of the player powers, some yep. of the, and as you get into the in-game strategy, that'll become more apparent. Uh -huh. So. Um, so you can draw one card. And then you have the option, if you have eggs in this space, to spend an egg to draw a second card. Okay. And that same iconography is going to go throughout the rest of the board as well, right? right? Draw two cards here, draw mm -hmm. two cards, pay an egg for a card, draw mm -hmm. three, so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Um, but since you don't have any eggs yet, you haven't taken the lay eggs action, the only thing available to you is just to go ahead and draw, draw one card. So I'm going to take. Uh, this painted bunting here, uh, mm -hmm. because it does eat at least one worm. Yep. Um, and that's kind of what the rules suggested we do. And that'll just go into my hand, right? Yes. Okay, so I'll set that down. Does this refill automatically? It refills at the end of your turn. So you're gonna activate all okay. of your birds in your row before you refill it. Okay, so the next step is going to be move your action cube onto your canvas back and choose whether to activate the canvas back and allow all players to draw another card. We recommend you do it this time. So in the process of moving down to this mm -hmm. kind of far left section, I'm stopping here on the canvas back mm -hmm. and reading this, this brown piece right. of text. So all players draw one card from the deck. Right. Okay, so we're gonna do so it. from the deck means from the face down cards, right, so. We got a chipping, chipping sparrow. sparrow. Very, very cute. Uh, and that'll just go into my hand as well. Correct. Is there a hand limit in this game? There's no hand limit. So you I can, can get as many cards in as In fact, I want. one of the bonus cards that you can have at the end of the game is just to have a lot of bird cards in your hand. Okay. If you have at least 
eight cards in your hand, you'll get seven points for it. You get some extra victory points. Yeah. Nice. Uh, move your action cube to the left part of your player mat, and then refill any empty spaces on the bird tray with a card from the deck. So that's when the, this will get cycled, and right. everyone else will be able to pick from that open mark. Exactly. So that's the first stage. So now you've taken two turns. You, t you played your bird with your first turn, mm -hmm. it went around, came back, and you've played, and you've uh, drawn bird cards with your second turn. And you can see that because you've got your two cubes out on your map. Okay, turn three here. Play the Vox's Swift in your forest. So I'm gonna place the action cube in the play the bird row above the first column. So that will be here, yep. same as the first action. And then play your Vox's Swift in the first space in the forest. Discard your invertebrate token to pay for it. So that'll be this one here. Yep. The first spot in the forest is gonna be up top here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I have to get rid of this because the food cost is a single worm, right? And then after I've played another bird, I'm gonna go ahead and move the action cube down to uh, the right. bottom of this line. Now this card also has a power, but that doesn't activate at the moment, does it? Correct, when you play a bird, you do not activate the card unless it's a bird like the Painted Bunting, which has a when played ability. Specifically so says when played. It specifically play. says when you played this do it. Otherwise you're not activating birds when you play them. Okay, let's move on to the fourth phase here and that'll be Great. kind of the swift start guide. So you've taken your three turns, it goes around, it comes back to you. Okay, uh, place your action cube in the right of your swift in the first uncovered space of your forest. So it's gonna be right here. Yep. Okay, and do the action show there. So what are the actions across this top row here? So this row is where you're gonna go when you need to get more food, which is what you need now because you've got two birds to play but you don't have any food for them because you've spent okay. it on the two that you've already played. So you're gonna go here and this die here shows that you get to take one die out of the bird feeder. It happens to always have the fruit on top when it's on your board but that doesn't mean anything. You can take any one of these, well, and we would have started the game with all five in there. You can take any one of the dice that are in the bird feeder. So I could take a cherry, I could mm -hmm. take a fish, and is this an either or? That's an either or, so you get either okay. a seed or a bug. Well, both of my birds down here currently uh, require either a seed or a bug. So I'm gonna take this and maybe just and go ahead and pull pick. over a wheat. Yep, sounds good. Okay, uh, and then what's the second icon down here? You can discard a card to take a second food out of the bird feeder. Okay, there's not uh, any more food that I really want for the cards that I'm playing at the moment but I may, I may need some down the road. This is the point where you start having to make your own decisions you start, you start alongside the over. Swift start, start Guide because um, you've gotten cards yep. um, that are unique to this play of the you game. You start developing so, your own strategy. Yep. Yeah, uh, and then the iconography continues down the rest of this line. So as you right. fill out these rows, you'll always take the farthest right action. Right. So here it would be gain two food, gain two food and discard a card to gain one, and gain three, yep. just like the the cards down here, and just like these eggs here in the center. Right. Let's go ahead and touch on what this row does if we were playing an action cube in this area. Sure, so you would play it in the first open space, okay. and you would lay two eggs, Okay. which just means that you take two eggs from the supply, and you can put them on any of your birds that have space for them. And remember, this number of egg icons is how much space that bird has for eggs. So I could put them both here, Although actually laying them on a star nest bird is usually mm. the best decision because of the way that that can interplay with the, the goals. Sure, and um, eggs are important for, I guess, two major regions. Right. Uh, first is gonna be end of game scoring. They could yes. relate to victory points depending on sort of hidden cards or just, you know, eggs on birds are victory points, yep. correct? Uh, right, which we haven't said yet. Which we haven't said yet, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> so each egg on a bird card is going to be worth one point at the end of the game. Yep, and then the other area where they're very important is going to be the play a bird action up top here. Uh, you'll see the farthest right zone here starts indicating one egg and then two egg as you play kind of down the row. So if I was gonna play another bird card down here in the wetland, I would actually need to pay an egg in order to place that card down there. Right. Pay an egg just means, just like food, you take an egg off of one of your bird cards and you place it back into the general storage. Right. Uh, the symbology here, you get two eggs, and then what do you do to trigger this? Right, so this is any food. Okay. Whenever you see this symbol, it just means any food. It's the five different colors of the pieces of food. Yep. Um, so you can discard any food to lay one extra egg. So sort of the same so repeating pattern it's here. It's absolutely the same. Discard structure. a card to gain a food, discard a food to gain an egg, 
discard an egg to gain a card. Right. And back around to the top. And so it's a, you mentioned the egg costs up here, which are very important, but it's important to remember that these only apply to this play a bird row. And yes. Um, you know, the size of this map is really constrained by the size of the box, mm -hmm. which is a standard board game size box. Um, but this play a bird row here is equivalent to these other three in, in the sense that when you're placing your action cubes here, you're, you're taking this action in this row and this cost only applies to this play a bird action. It's not a header for the other columns, sure. which is sometimes something people get confused about. A little bit of a confusion point. Yep. Uh, and let's go ahead and finish this this turn. Right. Uh, we just played down here. Uh, I decided to take a wheat from the bird feeder. I just set a dice over to the side. Mm -hmm. When this is empty or down to the last remaining piece of food, everything can be rerolled. Yes. Okay. So right now, for example, um, if you spent a card to take another food out and took a fish. So I add this to the discard pile. The next time that someone goes to take food out of the bird feeder. Yeah because all of the dice are showing the same face. There's only one type left. There's only one type left. They have the choice. They can still take fruit if they want to. Sure. But they have the choice if they want, they can re-roll all five dice. Okay. And that refills the bird feeder. All five of them are gonna be back in the tray. Um, and it'll give them more choice of, yeah. of food. Or in a situation, if they decided to take the last two pieces of fruit, yeah. then all five dice get re-rolled. Correct. So, okay. I will go ahead and re-roll all of these, because it's fun to do. Uh, <laughs> and the last thing that it says to do here on the sheet is to go ahead and move this down to the swift. Uh, right, activate. because you, you gained food and so we haven't finished this row yet. Yep, yep. so we're moving down. Uh, when activated, tuck a card from your hand behind this bird. If you do, gain one worm from the supply. Mm. Okay, so tucking is another mechanic. That means you're going to be putting a bird card underneath another card. Uh, tucking can relate to victory points at endgame as well. Yes. So it's a mechanic that can increase scoring at the end. Right. Each card tucked under your bird is worth a point at the end of the game. Okay. Basically, anything on top of your card or under your card is worth one point at the end of the game. Okay. Uh, and different cards, just like this one, will specify uh, different actions you take. Uh, right. So this one specifically says tuck. Any others that relate to laying eggs, drawing cards, tucking cards, will say it directly there. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then finally, we are moving our cube down to that final area. That's what I was just going to say. I saw you. I saw you reaching out for it. <laughs> uh, and that is the the end of our fourth turn. That's the setup for the Swift Start yeah, Guide. I think we gave an exa some examples that got more than four cubes on it. We did. Yeah. I was I was showing off I was showing off the eggs and <laughs> and triggering that middle row. Uh, turn five and beyond, you'll need to pay an egg to play another bird in your forest or wetland. Uh, so you may want to lay eggs soon. If you need to, you can always use two food tokens as one wild. So that's a specification up here. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of iconography. It shows those random food tokens, the yeah. kind of color wheel. Uh, that's indicating that you could always spend two of any type mm -hmm. for one of any type. So in this example, if you had a, a bird that ate fruit mm -hmm. and you're looking at this bird feeder and you're like, wow, it's gonna be a long time before I have a chance to get any fruit because yep. there's none there, you could choose to spend your seed and your fish as a fruit instead. Okay. And it can just get you unstuck. It's you know a little more expensive, so you don't want to do it a lot, but it can get you unstuck when you really want to play a certain bird and you're just not getting the food out of the bird feeder. Absolutely. Uh, what other sort of mechanics should people be aware of when getting into this game. Let's talk about the victory points just a little bit. Sure. What are the different ways to score uh, when you get to kind of end game? Sure. And then let's break down these four rounds that you're taking. Yep. That's great. So I just, I grabbed the uh, the score sheet from mm. the end of the game just to walk through the different things that you'll score at the end of the game. For sure. Um, so the birds, again, the points are just on the bird cards next to the little feather symbol. So. Mm -hmm. We've got six points here on our board right now, and by the end of the game, you know, you might have nine or ten birds, and you know, thirty or more points from your birds. Yep. Um, bonus cards we haven't talked about yet. Okay. And this is something, if this feels overwhelming and you're just starting, you can just not give people bonus cards in your sure. first game. But at the beginning of the game, you're gonna deal everyone two bonus cards. They're gonna look at their hand of birds that they've got and they're gonna pick one and discard mm -hmm. the other. So that you're picking your personal goal that you're working on for the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. 
Um, if we were dealt these two with this particular hand of birds, um, neither of these eats fruit, so I might pick the one that says, for birds that are worth less than four points, we're gonna get extra points. We've only got one so far, and to score any points at all, you have to get five to six birds, they score you three points. That's how you read these. Yeah. If you have seven or more birds that are worth less than four points, that's gonna give you six points at the end of the game. And so that will be one of the scoring mechanics. So this is one of the things that you'll score at the very end of the game, and you just keep that in your hand for the rest of the game and um, and score it at the end. And see if you can achieve and it. And you can ignore it. I wouldn't let it derail your game too mm -hmm. much if you're just not getting your the birds that you need for it. It's Compared to the total um, number of points that you can get in the game, this isn't huge. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a nice little piece of direction if you're wondering what you should be doing in the beginning of the game. It's something you can focus on. Sure. Um, and then there are the end of round goals, which have been sitting here and we've referred to them a couple of a few times, times, so we yeah. can walk through a little bit more how it's going to work. Um, so you're going to play out your eight actions during the game, right? And you're going to have all your cubes out on your board, you've done your things. And then after everyone has played out all of their action cubes, you're going to look at the, the goal for that round and you're going to see who has the most. Or you can, there's actually two sides to this. So if you played with this blue side, and the goal is total number of birds on your mat, mm -hmm. we would say, okay, we have two birds on our mat. And so we would put a cube here, and we'd get two points at the end mm -hmm. of the game for that. All right, if you're playing on the green side of this mat, it's first place, second place, third place. Mm -hmm. So if we have two birds out at the end of the first round and someone else has three, then we'd be in second place, and they'd be putting their cube here. Mm -hmm. And then the number of points that you get at the end of the game is, is marked there on the map. And now, an important thing to note about these end of game scoring, they are randomized, uh, and each one has iconography on it that is able to be referenced in the appendix, correct? Correct. So if you have shuffled these and set them out, and you're not quite sure what they do, a good suggestion is to go through the appendix and just read those lines tied directly to those icons. Right. Um, the other thing to note is, let's say both players have two bird cards. Yes. So they're tied for first and second place. Correct. Uh, they both place a cube there and then yes. split those points in half, right? Right, so you'd add up the four points for first place plus the one point for second place, that's five. So, and they need to get half and yeah. you round it down, unfortunately. So it'd be so two, two points, points each. each. Yeah. Uh, so that's the next stage of scoring. What else do we have? And then, um, so once you've done sort of your personal goals and the end of round goals and your birds, you're gonna count up, like I was talking about, all the stuff that's on top of your birds and under your birds. Okay. So the eggs are one point each. Okay. There are some cards that let you, they say cash food on this bird, C-A-C-H-E. And caching um, is usually birds storing food for winter, right? And so in the game, what that is, is you're just putting that food token on the bird card. Now this is- You can is... never spend it as food. Okay, and this yeah. is very different from the food you have in your supply. Right, because usually you're taking it just from the supply. Yep. It has nothing to do with, sometimes it comes from the bird feeder. Um, but you're storing it on this bird and it's just straight up points at the end of the game. Yep, and then um, we also have our and eggs the... and our tuck cards. Correct. Okay. Right. So those are all one point each. And then so you're, you're just going to count them up at the end of the game. Adding game. all of that up to, you know, figure out who's won or who's, who's right. built the most efficient kind of engine by the end of it. Right. This. So you may have one person that's going for really high point birds. You may have another person that's putting out tons of eggs at the end of the game. It mm -hmm. can actually be quite difficult to tell who's ahead until you do all the math of, of um, how it all adds up. So the... Uh, one of the last main kind of mechanic things that I want to touch on is going to be these rounds. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be four rounds in a game, and each one is going to be based off of how many cubes you have. So at yeah. the start of the game, I'm going to start with, or everyone's going to start with, eight cubes. Right. We'll place these just like we did in the first part of this tutorial, uh, playing bird cards, gaining bird cards, getting food, until they're all down here on the left side of our player board, mm -hmm. indicating that we have no more actions left, mm -hmm. right? Uh, after that, one of these cubes is going to go up here onto the top of the round. So as the game progresses, you're actually getting less actions per round, but you'll hopefully have the option for more things to kind of trigger and, and impact. Because right. uh, you'll have more of these when activated abilities and stuff like right, that. Right, right, right. So, right, so in round two, you'll have seven cubes, mm -hmm. and then you'll score one of the, the goals. And then in round three, you only have six cubes left, and you score one of the goals. Mm -hmm. 
And then in that last round of the game, you're only going to have five turns. Yep. It's yeah. It's quick. It, it is very quick. <laughs> yeah. It starts ramping up. Yep. Yep. But, and this is the second part of this, sort of the, the end of the video. For those that are watching this, brand new players playing off of this, but they still want to win their first game, talk a little bit about what type of game this is and, and a little bit about the mindset or the strategy someone mm -hmm. might think through when getting into it. Mm -hmm. What should they be paying attention to? Um, so this is what we often call an engine building game. You're mm. trying to get something going on your mat that you can keep coming back to that's gonna keep giving you stuff that helps you get points later. Mm. So early in the game, the, you know, all of the swift start cards are sort of set up this way. You wanna be playing birds that are relatively inexpensive that are giving you things. Sure, for So instance. this bird is giving you a card and this bird is giving you a food. Um, at some point mid-game, you're going to be getting lots of stuff. You need to start switching into scoring mm. points. So playing those higher point birds, playing the birds that are um, tucking lots of cards or other things like that. Mm. Um, so yeah, there can be a lot of strategy there. And then, you know, thinking about how, how full do you want your grassland to be so you can be laying more eggs because eggs are just straight up points. Yeah, one thing to, to definitely keep in mind is as you're placing down bird cards, so let's get a few that can, can go into the grassland here, if I can find a few of those. That's great. Uh, as you're playing down your bird cards, you'll always be activating, when you take an action, the farthest right available open space. And then whatever birds trigger along the route. So, if we wanted to be able to lay a lot of eggs at endgame, we may want to get down here to three or four kind of eggs at a time when you're mm -hmm. taking that action. Uh, so something to keep in mind, building out your birds, getting some birds onto the table that are not mm -hmm. only giving you stuff early game, mm -hmm. but let you take these end game actions is something right. to keep in mind. Right, so similarly, it can be super helpful to get um, a couple birds in your forest or in your wetland early because mm -hmm. you really need the, the food and the cards early in the game. So you can start developing your strategy, start getting heavier birds down and everything right. like that. And the one other thing that we haven't talked about, we briefly talked about the the birds that have when played powers, mm. so that um, you know when you play this on your mat, you're going to do the thing that it says on it. Mm -hmm. This one in particular is to draw two new bonus cards and and pick one of them and keep it. Okay. Um, but there are also these birds that have pink powers on them, and we haven't talked yeah. about that yet. So these activate when someone else in the game does something. Okay. Um, and the cowbirds were actually the inspiration for this whole thing. Really? So they cow, were... cowbirds in real life do not build their own nests. They only lay their eggs in other people in other birds' okay. nests, nest parasites. Um, so this cowbird, when another player takes the lay eggs action, right? When they mm -hmm. activate their grassland row, this bird lets you lay an egg on another bird with a bull nest. Okay. So if I'm playing and, and someone else, so I take a turn and say I'm playing a four player game. If any of those other three people lays eggs on their turn, I get to lay an egg on a bird with a bull nest. Okay. And then when it comes back to me, it resets. So that's the once between turns, right? So then I take a turn and then until my next turn, if anyone lays eggs, I get one egg. One single But if time, all three of those people lay eggs, you don't I get still to lay only get eggs. one egg. Yeah, because it's yeah. only one time between turns. Exactly. So that's how you, you use those pink powers. Um, this turkey vulture, once between turns, when another player's predator succeeds, mm. we haven't seen a predator bird come out in this example, um, the turkey vulture also gets food. Let's see. This will be a predator, predator yep. here. So predators have this symbol on them. Uh, it's sort of a skull and crossbones symbol. A skull and crossbones. Makes sense with a predator. Yep. Um, so golden eagles go hunting in the deck. Okay. They look at, a, at the top card in the deck, and if its wingspan is less than 100 centimeters, it tucks the card beneath that bird. Oh, I drew two here. But, uh, so you would draw this great blue heron, which is way too big for a golden eagle mm -hmm. to eat. Maybe not actually. Golden eagles can eat like sheep. I, but in the mechanics of this game. But in game. the mechanics of this game, <laughs> um, this golden eagle cannot eat this great blue heron yeah. because the great blue heron's uh, wingspan is 183 centimeters. We haven't actually pointed that out, but that's mm. the wingspan of each bird on here. Yep. Um, so because it can't, you just would discard that card. But if I had drawn, oh, the green. 
But if <laughs> <laughs> but if I had drawn a black neck stilt, mm -hmm. its wingspan's only 74 centimeters. So it's under 100 centimeters. I tuck it behind this bird. And, and so, that's just a point at the end of the game. So yeah. that's something that every time I come to the wetland and I'm using the golden eagle as I activate that row, it goes looking and I might or might not get a point. Yeah, and it's usually these predator birds that are mm -hmm. the ones that'll be actively tucking. Mm -hmm. There are other um, ones that roll the dice that aren't in the bird feeder that go looking for mice. Yeah. Um, but this, the same kind of, like that may or may not get you a point every time you activate it. Yep. So that's kind of the, the rundown of the game. Uh, hopefully people should be able to hop into the Swift Start Guide, uh, understand what's going on, and then after they've they've got through either a game or a cycle or mm -hmm. maybe one person at the table, yeah. then they can dive into the, like, the yeah. main rule book, the appendix, yeah. uh, and figure out some of the minutia. Yeah, and you'll see like the one that we used for this example got a bird into the forest and the mm -hmm. wetland, and there's another one that gets a bird out into the grassland. So you'll see, if you're playing a multiplayer game, you'll see a lot kind of, of stuff see happening. all the different pieces of the game happen just as it walks people through their first four turns. Yep, for sure. Cool. Thank you for uh, taking the time to swing by and uh, and do a little how to play on Wingspan. Absolutely. Uh, this is this is one of many people's favorite games of the year, but but uh, certainly one of mine. Oh, um, it's been so, so fun I'm, to see everyone playing it. So yeah, it's, it's been neat. Uh, if you guys have stayed tuned to this point in the video, hopefully you got this for Christmas or this is one that you're like excited to get down onto the table. Um, it really is a lovely game. You should play it like tomorrow or now. Uh, whatever the case. <laughs> Thank you so much for staying tuned. Leave a comment down below. Tell us where you got the game from, uh, how you kind of stumbled across it. Are you a hardcore gamer, uh, kind of already in the board game world, or is this one that the family gifted you because you just like birds a whole lot? Uh, whatever you do though, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. We'll see you next time. Thank you.